I've always been a huge fan of Nordic and Scandinavian design, and today we're about to visit a beautiful longhouse-inspired small home with a unique Kiwi edge, and the result is absolutely brilliant. Hey Heidi, how's it going? Hey Bryce, nice to meet you. It's lovely to meet you. G'day Matt, how's it going yeah, mate? Yeah, really good Bryce, really good. It is such a pleasure to meet you both and what an amazing home you've built here. Yeah, Thank cheers, you. man. The style of this house is just very cool. Can you talk to me about the design? It's kind of the Scandinavian longhouse sort of look that we were Give going for. Give us the for. inspiration. Yeah, we love the colour scheme and just the look and the shape, everything's really awesome about it. I love the material choices in this house as well. The large pad with the black just looks really striking. Yeah, we had a few design elements that we were really keen on, like mm. the plywood and the black as well. Um, and it kind of just, yeah, spiralled from there how we put it all together. Cedar and black seems to be the classic combination. What was your reason for using larch here? Yes, yeah, so other than the fact that everybody else has cedar, we wanted to do something different and um, we weren't sure what we were going to do, but then we come across the Siberian larch. It has very similar properties to cedar. Probably a more aggressive pattern in it, I reckon. Yeah. And you can leave it natural and it'll grey off, or you can seal it, which we've done um, with an oil. And the other big thing was just price. It was a lot cheaper. I still think it's one of the best decisions we made on the exterior of the house. And it's not a tiny house, but it's definitely a small house. So what size is this? Yeah, so it's uh, 65 square metres and that's the house and then the deck is a bit under 60 square meters of concrete as well. So here in New Zealand that 65 square meter mark that's kind of what we would refer to as a minor dwelling right? Yeah, yeah definitely not <laughs> tiny No. but by most of our friend standards it's pretty small. It's very small yeah. <laughs> and can you talk to me about the inspiration behind creating this home? We are actually on a holiday in Wanaka and we stayed in an Airbnb which was a little eco house and it just really started the ball rolling with something that we wanted to do ourselves. Yeah. yeah, it made us think about the fact that we were living in, like our house was 180 square metres, and we were living in like a third of it. Mm. And yeah, when we actually worked out what we were living in, we thought there's probably no point having a mortgage on a big house. Yeah. Let's go small. And yeah, 65 square metres is kind of just where we ended up. Like mm. it wasn't a goal. We just measured out what we reckoned we needed and wanted. and. Mm that's how it came to be. And the house is beautiful, of course, but it is impossible to ignore this gorgeous section. Yeah, we were pretty lucky with this section. It wasn't actually for sale. It was a friend's backyard mm. that we managed to buy. So it's a half acre and yeah, it was a blank canvas, which has had its pros and cons. Like we've been able to really establish it the way that we want to, yes. but it's going to take some time to get the fruit trees and everything established yeah. as well. There's not any shelter or anything yeah. yet, but we'll, we're working on it. You certainly are. You've got some great looking vegetable gardens there. Yeah, I love spending time out there. That's my happy place. We're trying to be as self-sufficient as possible and yeah, just really getting back to basics and being connected to the land. And you've done such a great job with the landscaping here as well. Yes, yeah, so uh, I've dug a lot of holes. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely still a work in progress, but we have done a lot actually. When you stop and yeah, look around, definitely. we have. Yeah. And a very happy and busy looking puppy running around the backyard as well. Yes, and that is why we have a massive fence around <laughs> our place, just to keep the dog contained and yeah, he loves safe. his big backyard. Yeah. And you've got some fantastic outbuildings as well. That is a very serious garage you've got there. You know, man's got to have a shed. Um, he totally <laughs> does. It's bigger um, than the house. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be bigger <laughs> than the house too. I'm a mechanic by trade, so naturally I've got to have a shed so that I can tinker on my toys and, you know, keep our mountain bikes running and our motorbikes running. And obviously uh, we used that shed. It was built before the house. So a lot of this house was built in that shed and then obviously transported over here and put inside and whatnot. So yeah, it was very handy. <laughs> I am totally with you on that one. I think I could live in a tiny house forever, but I could definitely use one of those. Yeah, you just gotta have one. <laughs>
And then you've got the studio there as well? Yeah, so that's my work office and being able to go out of the house for work but still be at home. It's a pretty short commute <laughs> over to the studio. You cannot complain about your commute to work, can you? No, <laughs> work, can you? no definitely, definitely not. not. And we got that wee studio sort of with the idea that potentially it could become like a bit of a self-contained unit in the future mm. if we have people to stay. And the outdoor space you've created here is really nice. I especially love the hot tub there. I think that was actually the very first thing that yeah, was purchased was. for this whole house build was Heidi had to the have an outside bath. bath. We don't use it a lot, but when we do, we're glad that we've got it and it's something a little bit special. Yeah, well, especially on these cold Southland nights, being able to jump in the tub, I bet there's nothing like it. No, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome, cool. especially if you get a really nice clear night and you can see all the stars. It's really good. We've had many nights out here, a few drinks, or sometimes we just watch a movie. It's, yeah really really good now obviously it is freezing cold we're in the middle of winter right now but in the summer it must be so nice just to be able to completely open up that huge door so that the house is just completely exposed to the outdoors yeah most days in summer i've got that stacked right up and just got that indoor outdoor flow and yeah it's beautiful and that was another reason for putting this concrete area out here the same level as the house so you just walk straight out no mm -hmm. steps yeah, it's lovely having that very smooth transition into the home, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, from the outside, this is just such a cool looking house and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? We sure yeah, can, come on in. After you. This is just incredible. I love the combination of the concrete floors with the plywood. Thank you, yeah, we really love the contrast too. There's something about the plywood look that really helps to make a space feel quite warm and welcoming. We just wanted that sort of holiday house vibe as well and concrete floor, low maintenance, easy clean. And you both actually did a lot of the construction work in this home yourselves, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We were quite involved with the process. We had a builder friend help us with most of the initial frame up and the cladding. Yes. But once we got inside, yeah, that was kind of our project. So I did the concrete floors. I sanded them and Matt sealed them and then Matt pretty much did all the ply walls and ceiling. Yep, you had a wee bit of help from the builders to do the ceiling because it was a bit hard being pitched like that. And yeah, this is the finished product. And that's such a great way of doing it as well because you have the peace of mind of knowing that professionals have taken care of all of the water tightness and all of that sort of thing, but you also get to put your own hands into the build as well, which is really great. Yes, I've actually got a wee collection of uh, my granddad's old woodworking tools and some of Heidi's dad's old woodworking tools out of my shed. And I really liked woodworking when I was younger. My granddad taught me how to do a fair bit of woodwork. So I actually brought some of those old tools and uh, built parts of this house with it. And um, the old builders gave me a bit of stick for my tools being older than I was, but <laughs> um, hey, they still do the same job. They sure do. Yeah. And you get to build that family history into your house, which yeah. is very cool. And right now we are standing in your lounge and this is just such a comfy space. You've got a great size sofa, the two recliner chairs, very nice. Yeah, being able to go to 65 square meters sort of meant that we didn't have to downsize um, our furniture and have mm. special like tiny house furniture. So a lot of the furniture is actually out of our old house. We made it just big enough so that we could have anything you could have in a big house we can have in here and it still feels like you've got plenty of space. Nice size TV in the corner. I really wanted it not to be a focal point of the room. A lot of modern homes, you know, you walk in and the TV is like that big yeah. centerpiece. Yeah. So yeah, we tucked it away on the corner on the wall and works well. And of course, here in Southland, the temperatures can really drop, so it's great to see a lovely wood stove there as well. Yeah, definitely. Got to have a fire, Bryce. Like, you can't beat the heat of a fire. No. And yeah, so this one here is actually a really low emission model, so it's supposedly one of the lowest emissions in New Zealand. Yeah, it's a really cool bit of kit. And one of the things that I really like about this space is this open plan design between the kitchen and the living room. Yeah, the design of it was just really conscious. The pitch ceiling, the open plan. We love entertaining, having friends and family over. So being able to have a space where we can all hang out and during summer, being able to open up those doors as well just even adds more to that. And then this kitchen design is really nice. You are not wanting for anything in this kitchen, are you? No, I love my kitchen, Bryce. Um, yeah, this is the hub of the home and it's actually modeled off our old kitchen. So we liked the layout, 
but it wasn't big enough. So what we've actually done is we've got a bigger kitchen in our small house than we did in our big house. Perfect. Yeah, so it's got a deeper bench space so that we can sit there and, and eat because we don't have a dining room anymore. And um, it's also got more space between the two benches as well because we both love being in the kitchen together. Mm. So it's just more user friendly. Lots of prep space in this kitchen. And of course, that is especially important for you because you're actually doing cooking demonstrations as part of your business. Yeah, I am. So that wasn't um, part of the plan when we built the kitchen, but it's worked out really well that it's a really um, user friendly space to be able to do cooking demonstrations. So I work with Thermomix and that means that I can do demonstrations in the kitchen. I've also done some garden to table workshops here with having people in my home as well, which is cool. Fantastic. And isn't it great that you get to incorporate your home and your business? Yeah, having that lifestyle alignment with my business is a really cool thing. Definitely. And of course, you've got all the necessary appliances here. We wanted to have everything in this house that you could have in a big house. So got an oven, got a range top, we've got dishwasher, microwave, pull out pantry. It's got everything you need, heaps of storage. Two thermomixes. Um, yeah, two thermomixes. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee machine, like it's got everything that you could ever possibly want and you can feed an army in here, it's not a problem. And having this sort of kitchen island with the sink is such a nice feature as well because it actually allows people who are in the living room to sort of connect to whoever's in the kitchen and it makes it a little bit more social, doesn't it? Very much so. Yeah, yeah we love that about it. People can either sit up at the bench with us while we're preparing tea and hanging out or they can be in the lounge and we all still feel part of the conversation together. And a beautiful bench top here too. A good friend of ours built this kitchen for us mm -hmm. and um, we get a lot of comments on that bench top, people asking, oh the marble is awesome, but it's not marble. <laughs> it's just more like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not that rich, but uh, <laughs> it looks good. So It's a very, very good fake though, yes, isn't it? exactly, <laughs> yeah. You've got a nice compact hallway design as well to access the rest of the home. Oh uh, yeah, Bryce, it is. I mean, it takes up a little bit of room, but uh, for the look of the house that we went with, you, you had to have a hallway to access those rooms. Fair enough. And what do we have next door? Uh, technically that's our second bedroom, but we'll come and have a look. All right. This is great. So you've actually got it set up as a bit of a storeroom at the moment. Yeah, well, as you can see, we've got a bit of an abundance of food in here. So, yeah, it doesn't get as much sun as the rest of the house as well. And we can close that door so it's actually nice and cool in here. Really good for storing food. You know, we've also got our hot water cylinders in the cupboard behind us. Technically, like I said, this is a bedroom, but we don't need it. So, <laughs> Especially when you're growing so much of your own food and when you are focused on preserving and that sort of thing, that takes up a lot of space. So it's great that you were able to do that in here. That was a project that I had Matt help me with the shelving, um, build some shelving because I was just accumulating a lot of preserves and sauces and jams and stuff. So yeah, we needed a bit of a storage system for all of that. And then what do we have next door? Uh, that's actually our bathroom brush, so we're going to have a look. Let's do it. This is a very cool bathroom design. Again, very spacious. Thanks. Yeah, it's got everything that we need. And I wanted it to be quite earthy and actually went a bit darker with the theme in here and it's got a really cosy, earthy vibe to it. It certainly does. Really nice tiles in the shower. And what a huge shower you've got too. Yeah, so that was a big must for me because um, <laughs> I'm pretty tall like yourself. The only input other than that uh, shelf that I built for the vanity there was the tiles and they just happened to be the most expensive tiles in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Fine taste. They do look really good and it's worth splashing out on those little things when you know that it's gonna make such a big difference to the space. Yeah. Lovely basin and vanity too. The vanity was a bit of a idea that Heidi sort of dreamt up and um, I got the old MIG welder and the grinder out and I made up the supports and then we sourced some um, recycled remu out of a place in Invercargill mm. and we got our friend that did the kitchen he machined that up all nice and smooth for us and then Heidi bought some uh, resin. resin for it yeah. and put that on there and yeah it's just come up a treat. Reclaimed Remo has to be one of my all-time favorite timbers. Yeah you can't beat it and you just can't get that kind of wood anymore. No. Washing machine in here too? Yeah, so we've got the full-size washing machine in here. Um, the only thing that's missing is a laundry tub. And I was worried about not having a laundry and not having that tub. Um, but to be honest, I haven't missed it. And I'm guessing next door we must have your bedroom. Yep, we sure do. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. 
Hey, this is very cool. I really like how you've stepped the bed forward like this. Yeah, we put in that false wall so that our wardrobe is actually behind that and it doubles as our headboard so we don't have to have any furniture in here. What a great idea. It's such a clever but very clean way of storing all of your clothing. Yeah, definitely. The main thing was to keep it very clean in here, not having any drawers to bump into. Plus, you know, we've got a nice door here and we can have a view. If we had drawers there, then, you know, we're not going to have any kind of view out there. Absolutely. Having the door there as well is especially nice. Quick access to the tub when needed. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes it easy for sneaking around there and jumping in and then come straight back through and jump into the bathroom. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. And I really like how you've got the sign up there with the nice cut in above the headboard. That's a very nice feature. Yeah, it just gives us shelving. There's built in lighting in there. And yeah, just keeps the room really clean and yeah, tidy. And again, the plywood becomes such a lovely feature in here as well. It's so simple, but it just adds so much to the room. Yeah, it just gives it that real warm, sort of homey feeling when you're just tucked up in bed. It's, yeah, it's um, very cozy. Yeah, very cozy. And the way you've got the sliding doors in the bedroom and the hallway is just such a nice touch. Just space saving rather than having opening doors and yeah just added to that contrast with a bit of texture and they just yeah. fitted the style really well having the barn doors. Plus they just look really cool. <laughs> they yeah. certainly do. And so how long have you been living in the house now? It'll be coming out three years in September. Great and how are you finding life here? Loving it eh? It's such an awesome place to live. Yeah I think the word that comes to mind for me is that it's easy. It's just so easy to live here. Living in a small home has definitely taught me a lot about the life that you get to live and making sure that you're doing it and you're not just caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff, which is definitely what we were like mm. in our big house. It just makes you really conscious and make sure that you're living your best life day to day. You know, in our old place, you know, you'd work all week and then you go to the supermarket and you buy all your food. Well, now we've got a bigger section, smaller house. We've got more room for gardens, fruit trees, vegetables, everything that we can possibly grow here. We're trying to grow here to be as self-sufficient as possible. Yeah, just getting back to basics. Yeah. I feel like we've done quite a, a, a life. Yeah. yeah, on what we used to be like. It's everything we wanted. We wouldn't change not a single thing in this place. We've got our dream home. It's our forever home. And this is such an impressive build. Can we talk about the cost that was involved in bringing all of this to life? Yeah, so I think we came to about 220000 for the build, um, just for the house alone. Yeah, without the services or the sheet or anything. Right, that is a great result because you have such a spacious, warm and beautiful home for that. Thank you. Yeah, and even with all the land and everything else around here, um, value for money, we're still doing really well. And it's shaved about 15 years off our mortgage by downsizing sure. yeah. as well. So that's a huge saving for us, a lot more living and a lot less work. And so now that the home is finished and now you're happily living in the house, what does the future hold for you? We're hoping to be debt free in the next five years and to continue adding um, things like solar and developing the backyard a bit mm. more. But yeah, plenty of living and adventures in the meantime as well. Yes. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Well, you have both done such an incredible job with this home. From the striking exterior, the beautiful interior, the gardens, the garage, you really have created the most amazing setup for yourselves here. Thank you both so much for sharing it with no me. No worries, Bryce. Thanks for coming to visit. Absolutely my pleasure. Matt and Heidi have done such a brilliant job with the build of this home. You can really see how the original Nordic log house inspiration has been transformed into a beautiful, easy living Kiwi home. They really have absolutely nailed this design and created a home that perfectly meets their needs.